Hi everyone um, and welcome to our training webinar about Bongo, the new video conferencing app within MindTap. I'm Stephanie from the Cengage marketing team and we also have Roxanne on the line. Hi Roxanne. Hi. Hello. Um, and I'm delighted to introduce Stuart Webster, our digital solutions manager, who will be walking you through the app and demoing all the features for us today. Hi Stuart. Hello. Hello. So um, before we get stuck into the demo, I should just explain that um, Cengage has added the Bongo app into the MindTaps for all active courses. So if you have an active MindTap course that you're using this semester, you will definitely have access to the Bongo app. And in a moment, we'll show you where you will find that. Um, but if you can't find it, don't worry, please just get in touch um, because Stuart can add it into the MindTap very easily. Um, I would also like to just quickly highlight that the reason Cengage have added this feature into the MindTap courses is to help support our customers during these unique circumstances. Um, Bongo will enable you to host live meetings with your students and record meetings. You'll be able to share your slides and create breakout rooms. Um, and Cengage has also opened up free access to all of our digital courseware in response to the crisis. So please do get in touch if there's anything that you or your colleagues need. There's, um, there's the URL to our web page on, on the screen right now. Um, do get in touch and we'll try to help you out as quickly as possible. So, um, Stuart, would you like to start by um, showing everyone how to find the app in MindTap and uh, perhaps some basic navigation? Hi. Um, yeah, sure. I can I can do that. So I've already launched into my MindTap course. So for those of you who've used MindTap already or are current users of MindTap, this should look quite familiar. And for those of you that are interested after the call today, uh, please get in touch and, and we can make uh, this view and this experience familiar to you too. And um, so um, inside um, of MindTap on the right hand side here, we have um, a set of applications that are used to create functionality in MindTap. This little blue circle when I hover over it is Bongo. I'm just going to click on there to launch the app. So once Bongo's launched, we'll just go through and have a look at some of the basic uh, functionality in the meetings uh, function. So I'm going to go up to this menu bar in the top right hand corner and I'm going to select meetings. And that brings us into um, our meetings tool. So you'll see you've got your active meetings menu um, in the center of the screen and below it any recorded meetings. And we'll come back to recordings later and look at um, how you can share those recordings uh, with, with your students um, and where you can host those, uh, those recordings. The first thing we need to do is actually get a meeting up and running. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna go down to the red circle in the bottom corner and I'm going to click on there to schedule a new meeting. It's a really simple process. It's really quick and easy and it can be instantaneous or it can be pre-planned. So I'm going to call this uh, Bongo Intro 2, as I did Intro 1 this morning. Um, I can put in a meeting date, so I can select a pre-date for that, and I can select a specific time. You can pre-schedule these, or if it's an instantaneous thing, you can just hit the, the Now button and hit Save, and that brings up your Bongo meeting. So this can be launched immediately, or as we said, it can be uh, pre-prepared and shared with your students beforehand for a future date. Either way, when you're ready to launch into your meeting, you simply click the launch button. So all I did there was click on these three little dots and select launch, and it takes me straight into the Bongo experience. I'm going to enter the meeting room. Every time you go into a Bongo meeting, you'll find something that looks a little like this. It'll ask you to do an echo test, and this is just to make sure that you get the best sound quality for you and your students to make sure there's not too much echoey sound in the background you're not getting anything that's too distracting so the system is quite advanced in the way that it, it looks at that sound and makes sure you get the best experience so we're now into a meeting it's only taken a couple of minutes and we've already launched into a live meeting we could have shared that link with our students and have them join us in our meeting space some basic navigation up in the uh, top left hand corner here we can see a list of our participants so if i click on there I would see a list of my participants down here. I have a chat feature, so I can do public chat with all of my students and have them 
uh, communicate with me in the chat room. And this is advantageous if you don't want them all using their microphones and trying to talk during your lecture. But they can talk if you want that option too. We've got our recording button. We'll come back to that in a moment. And then we have a set of annotation tools that allow you to annotate on top of PowerPoint slides or onto a whiteboard like the one we've got at the moment, um, as well as um, have the students annotate as well. But you have full control over that all of the time. Final piece on our nav uh, basic navigation are our set of icons at the bottom of the screen. They allow us to control our microphone, to close off the call, to share our camera, and also to be able to share our screen. So if you want to share an application in a browser or possibly something like an Excel spreadsheet, you can share those in Bongo too. Stephanie, I've covered quite a few things there initially. Is there anything um, that, that you'd like me to go back over or maybe that, that wasn't entirely clear? No, I think that's great. I think that's a, a good basic navigation. Um, what would be the next thing to show um, our, our audience? Um, should we show them how to then share the screen or perhaps would you now um, show them how to do the recording? Um, I mean, I would always start with the recording. Um, yeah. The recording is, is um, initially is for you as the instructor, so it's a private recording. It doesn't automatically get distributed to your students or anything like that. So you can make a decision about how that's distributed if it's distributed. So starting the recording early just means that you capture everything that's happened um, in, uh, in your lecture. So, and it is literally as simple as going up to the top and hitting the record button. Okay. You'll see a message will pop up on the right hand side of the screen and that starts recording immediately. Once we get to the end, you just stop the record by hitting the record button again tells you your recording stopped. And about 10 minutes after you finish the entire meeting, it will pop up in your dashboard. And we'll look at how you can share and distribute that um, once you finish the meeting. But recording meetings is really quick and easy and you have full control over um, how that's distributed or even if it is distributed. If, you're, if you don't need to use it or you don't want it, you can just delete that file. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So let's assume we're, we're recording our session um, and uh, you're a lecturer who now wants to share your screen with perhaps slides or something else. Can you talk us through that? Sure. So we'll look at slides first because there's a slightly different process for both. And, and I think both are important things that you may want to do as part of a, of a lecture. So if I want to share my slides, I'm going to come down to the bottom left hand corner. There's a blue button down here. If I hover over it, it says actions. And it gives me a few things I can do. So things like muting my students, initiating a poll, but also I can upload a presentation. So I'm just gonna select upload presentation. And then I can either drag a file here or I can just browse for it the same way that you would for any other kind of file on your computer. And I'm going to go and get our bongo slides, the ones we used earlier. I'm gonna select those, hit open, and it's waiting to be uploaded. I'm just gonna hit start. As you can see, this is moving pretty quickly, so you can do this during really quickly um, if you're doing it on the car. So it's going to take a moment while it converts them into the format that we need on Bongo. And once that's done, we'll be able to share those slides. We can annotate on top of the, the slides. Um, and we can even distribute the slides to our students if we want to. And there we go. So now you can see the slides, these are the ones that I've just uploaded. I can scroll through them. They take a moment to load because these are uh, now um, living up in the cloud and I can annotate on top of those. So I can use my annotation tools to be able to, uh, to draw or write on top of these slides. Um, and I can change colors and kind of really emphasize elements as I work through my lecture. You can also give this functionality to your students. You can allow them to annotate and maybe have them answer a question and even make them co-host with you on your Bongo event. Yeah, that's really so that's... Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, that's really helpful. So the other one um, we talked about a moment ago was sharing our screen. So currently we're just sharing a slide and this is now hosted inside the Bongo app. If you wanted to share something that was going on on your desktop, um, one of our four buttons at the bottom of the screen is our share screen button. So I can simply click on there. It asks me which screen I want to share. So I'm going to share uh, this one and hit share screen. 
I'm going to jump to a tab share. So we're now inside of my MindTap course. I may want to show a student something inside of my, the MindTap course. So I'm going to close the window I'm in. And now you can see inside of the MindTap course. So if you wanted to emphasize a particular piece of content from your MindTap course, look at a particular piece of material, you could do that. You could also open a new browser window, go search for something. So if you're looking for an article that you want to share with your students or want to look at something that's uh, in the news that particular day, you could do that as well. So you've got lots of options for being able to share material with your students. And so that's screen sharing. So you can both screen share and you can um, uh, share browsers and any of the applications that are running on your device. Okay. And for screen sharing, and bring us back to our whiteboard. That's great. Thank you. Um, do you think we've covered everything on, on screen sharing? Um... Um, I think the only other piece that's worth mentioning is, so there we looked at being able to, um, to share the whole of our screen as well as our PowerPoint slides. If you're slightly concerned and want to um, um, have uh, a little bit more um, control, you can actually choose to share a specific tab within your browser or a specific application that's running your computer. And I think certainly um, if this is something you're new to and you haven't used these kinds of tools before, having that level of control can be really useful and kind of builds your confidence that students are going to see things on your screen or on your computer that you don't want them to see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, that's great. So um, I guess one of the next features that um, our audience would like to know about, um, how to create breakout rooms. Um, is that something you're able to demo for us? Yeah, I can kind of show you the process there. But I mean, I think just to explain what breakout rooms are, um, they are kind of what they sound like. It's the ability to take all of the students that are in your lecture at that point in time and put them into separate rooms. Um, why would you want to do that? Well, you may give them an individual question to go and answer. So they might, might pose a question, a different question to each group send them away to have a think about it in their breakout room and then come back. And as I said, you can make them co-host so they could kind of deliver or discuss the answers that they've come up with questions. So it's a great way of keeping your students engaged and be able to get them thinking, maybe to be working slightly more interactively, particularly if you've got a sort of medium to large size group. And um, doing that's really simple. So again, I'm going to go to my actions button in the bottom left. And this time I'm going to select the breakout rooms option. And you get a view like this. So this is specific to you as an instructor. And you get a few options here. So one is the number of rooms that you want to create. So anywhere between two and six. The time limit, so you can decide how long your students are going to be in the breakout room for. This is really helpful if you think about it because it saves you having to drag the students back. Whatever that time limit is that you set, um, at the end of that time limit, it closes all the breakout rooms and it sends the students back to your main digital meeting room, your, your digital lecture hall. Um, you can manually shut down the meeting room, the breakout rooms at any time. So let's say uh, you need to move forward a bit more quickly and you've set it at 15 minutes, 10 minutes, you just click a button, everybody comes back to that main lecture hall. The bit I can't show you today, so you're going to have to kind of use your imagination a little, is where it says room one and two here. And if I make it five, you can see our five rooms, we would automatically see lists of all of the students who are in our lecture, in our bongo call at this particular time. They automatically get assigned to a room. You can manually drag them to specific rooms and make sure they're there. And when you're ready to go, you just hit create. It's really quick and easy, and it just allows the students to be able to, to have a discussion, to interact with e each other, and kind of create a higher level of engagement um, in, in your bongo call. Once they're inside a breakout room, it looks just like our um, regular meeting room. So if I close this, this is exactly what they're going to see. Um, they're going to have annotation tools. They will be able to share slides if they need to. Um, and they can have a discussion in there, either using the chat room feature we mentioned earlier or using the microphone. That's really great. Thank you. I think you've shown us enough of how to do it. And I think our lecturers will just, um, you know, be able to have a go themselves with their, with their students the first time and, and have a go at using it and see how it goes. Thank you. Um, so could you show us then um, how to share the recording with students or is there anything else you'd like to cover first? Um, I think that kind of covers a lot of, of the core functionality. I mean, 
as you mentioned, there is the link um, to our to our support page, and on there are some other materials um, around um, using digital tools, and, and particularly for those who are new to using digital tools and how you might you use them. I think there's some helpful information there, but I think that's the basic of it. We want to keep it really simple. So getting your students into a call for you to be able to talk to them, if you want to turn your camera on for them to be able to see you um, and to be able to to deliver those lectures in an online fashion, to be able to also record them and share those recordings with your students. I mean, that, that's kind of what we're looking at here. Um, it's, it's not a case of reinventing the wheel. It's just a very simple, easy to use way of, of engaging with your students and obviously link directly um, to the MindTap product and the Cengage content that you may also be using um, as part of your course. So to show that last bit of the recording, I'm going to um, finish my meeting off now, so I'm going to come out of my meeting and close my tab. And now I'm back into my MindTap course. I'm just going to launch Bongo again so we can see where that recording is. So again, as we did earlier, I'm going to go up to the uh, top left hand corner and in the menu, I'm going to select meetings. And here we can see active meetings. This is the one we've just finished. And here's my recording from earlier this morning. In our actions options, our three little buttons I can click on here and I've got a couple of options. So I can go to a uh, copy public URL. So that just copies the URL that's now saved to my clipboard and I can paste that into an email. Um, I could put it into my learning management system to share it with my students that way. Or you can even put it into the MindTap course and I'll show you that in a moment. One more thing that's worth maybe worth seeing is you can actually download the recording. So if you wanted to edit it, you can download the file and edit the file. Um, and you can see the attendance of those who attended this particular recording. To show you quickly how you'd share it in a Cengage um, environment, so inside of MindTap, back into uh, my MindTap course, I'm going to click on the Add and Create button, and I'm going to create a new activity. And the activity is going to be sharing the recording. My recording is a web link, so I'm going to go to my web link activity, and all I'm going to do is paste my link, hit continue. I can put some text around this, just explaining what the recording is for maybe for students who didn't um, come to the event, or maybe you didn't have any students in your event, and this is just a recording you've created. Hit save, and now I'm able to position it within my course. So I'm just going to leave it there and hit add so you can see it appear inside my course, but you can schedule it into a specific place. You could have renamed here and down at the bottom of my learning pathway now I've got my recording so really quick and easy way of being able to share that recording with students particularly if you're actively using MindTap with your students you can post those recordings throughout your learning pathway so they fit in in the appropriate place for your students Thanks, Stuart. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. It really does show, um, you know, the tools that lecturers could be using to record their lectures or maybe do lectures with students who are available and then share the lecture with all of those who weren't able to attend. That's, that's I'm sure many of our customers will find that helpful. And also when we send this recording out, we'll be including um, a document with five very easy to implement um, training activities. These are, we, we've given you the tools and the functionality, but these are just quick tips on, on how to maximize the engagement and collaboration um, with your students when you're doing a live lecture. Um, thank you. Um, no worries. Um, and like I said, I think I think it is a it's a very simple tool to use. Uh, hopefully, it's come across today. You've seen how easy it is to both schedule and launch into those calls, and a great way of being able to engage with your students um, whilst they aren't able to come onto campus. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Is there anything else we need to say other than to thank um, everyone who's going to be listening to the recording? And I guess just to remind our customers to please do get in touch with the Cengage team. Contact your local uh, sales team. Um, we're very, very happy to help set you up with MindTap um, and any resources that you need. Um, I, I, I think that's it for me. So um, keep safe and please get in touch if we can do anything to help. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Stuart.